Hi everyone, it's Fox from E-Models here. Uh, welcome to part 11 of our build of the Ravel Colonial Viper Mark II. Okie dokie, right. If you followed on from the last episode, we did some streaking uh, with oil paints. That's all dried now, it's had plenty of time to dry. Um, got a little bit carried away if I'm honest, and the overall colour came out uh, a bit darker. I think I made a mistake in using a big brush because it tended to colour the whole panel rather than just do the streaks. Uh, but it's fine, I can live with it. It's, uh, it looks, still looks pretty good, it looks nice and dirty. Um, so a handy tip, if you're doing streaks but you don't want to discolour the whole ship, uh, and just really make the streak on its own. Perhaps use a smaller brush, um, something like this. It's very soft. That's the wrong one. It's very soft. It's chisel edged. Um, and this might be better for doing a small streak so it doesn't do the whole panel. But as it turns out, happy accidents and all that, um, the discoloration came out quite nice. As I say, it does still look like it's been sat on a smoky pub shelf for 20 years, but I can, that's kind of what I was looking for. Okay, there's two last bits of um, weathering to do. Well, not two, but there's two major bits of weathering left to do. We're going to do um, some dry brushing with oils. It's two stages, sort of two stages. First of all, the dry brushing just for all the sooty marks and um, oily stains and things like that. Not streaks, but patches and darkening. Uh, then we need to get some oil paint into these sections um, to make them look not like silver. And I've got the back piece as well, so we're going to be doing some dry brushing on here to make these look like working engines. And then once that's done, it's a case of stick the engines on the back, repeat this procedure on here. So we might do these side pieces and this back bit at the same time. Uh, stick the back on, then I need to paint these in and do a little bit of dry brushing around the edge to suggest heat and dirt from the engine. So we're going to leave these bits for now because I'm going to be doing matte varnishes. I need to make sure these are shiny like I said before. So um, when it comes to matte varnishing the engines, I'll probably mask these parts off and matte varnish. Or I might just brush matte varnish these rather than spray them. So I'll try and do these as quickly as possible today because we're getting near the end now and I don't need to have a three quarters of an hour waffly episode because um, it's not too difficult. So back with your roll paints, our two favourites. 502 Abtailung Starship Filth and 502 Abtailung Engine Grease. Both available from E-Models, both absolutely fabulous colours. My little palette, which is actually it was a divider from a little box set of uh, Dremel bits. So anything can be used as a palette. I've got my little thing of turpinoid, odourless turpinoid or odourless thinner, however you want to call it. Uh, I have my bit of kitchen roll for the dry brushings. Now if you're watching this you won't know but there's been about a three week gap between the last two episodes. The last two episodes I kind of did back to back and sent to the guys at E-Models and then there's been a three week gap because the weather has been terrible. It's been raining and windy, there's been trees falling down and cows flying past the window and grain silos flying through the air and all kinds of nonsense. And I need the daylight to film because the window is there behind the camera and I need the daylight I've got a light over there to counterbalance the shadows, so I'm kind of restricted when I can film. So apologies if there's any delays. Um, also, I think Gav went away for a couple of weeks. Lucky bugger. So, uh, also hence the delays. Wish I was somewhere sunny. Okie dokie, right. Dry brushing, 101. Dead easy. Uh, Starship filth. On the palette. Just double check. As always, the focus, so I can make sure you can see all this. Do 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 do. Make sure I'm not focusing on my hand. So Starship Filth. Now these look very similar, so you have to kind of keep them apart so you know which is which, because I get confused. Engine grease. So I'm going to put these up here, like that, so I know which is which. Uh, oh, one other useful thing for when you're using oil paints uh, is a pair of gloves. Just because oil paints take forever to dry. And the last thing you want to do is carefully dry brush all this stuff on 
and while you're dry brushing it be putting big doddy fingerprints or rubbing off bits you've already painted. Uh, for dry brushing and washes it's normally about 24 hours before you can do the next coat of paint as I said in the previous video I think. So we'll do this dry brushing now then we'll leave it to dry for 24 hours uh, and then we can do the, the thicker interior bits. So nice and simple. Um, I'm going to be putting some dry brushing just around like the intake. I want to make the inside of the intakes dark. I've painted in there as well. I've put some wash in there. I want to darken inside here and these two. Put some some uh, darkening here. I'm going to put a little bit of darkening around the edges here. I'm going to put more on the engines at the back of the engines because the exhaust goes that way. Um, I'll put some around here coming up. Uh, I'll probably put some around the guns um, just here and now. I won't do any fading out here again because I'm going to do this in a particular way. So you will see. So anyway, let's get this done. So I'll do the engines first. As I've said before, engine grease is a nice kind of oily colour. So I'll just show you the engines. I've, I've painted these up now. Uh, get these in focus. What I've done with these uh, is some black and smoke washes on these sections here just to make them dirty so all the, the bits stand out in relief. Uh, I've painted the engines flat aluminium then a couple of washes of thinned black wash. Uh, one wash of to me a sea green I used just to give it a slight bluey tinge. Didn't actually come out that way unfortunately but hey. Uh, and then a couple of not washes but just painting over with smoke just smoke straight from the pot it gathers around these little edges of the goose feathers and darkens it did the same inside but I'm gonna black these out with oil paints to make them darker so but that's the engine. I'm gonna do these first uh, now what I'm gonna do for this bit here and the sides on the Viper I'm gonna use a thicker paint technique so I'm not gonna dry brush those just yet I might do a little bit of dry brushing just for some shading now I want these to look like they're subject to a lot of heat so I want to I want to sort of burnish them. I want to give them that kind of stained look. So I'm going to use engine grease first, which gives that brownie heat stain, and then I'll use the Starship filth to darken everything. Um, now what I'll actually do, I could do the engine grease and then the Starship filth, but they'll mix together and you'll get a kind of grey colour. What I'm actually going to do is do this the engine grease now, let it dry, and then do the Starship filth. So dry brushing. Uh, engine grease, yes. Get some on your brush. This is a soft chisel edge brush. Fill your brush up, fill your boots. Ow. Then get most of it off on the tissue, just gently brushing it. And this can be, this is the same technique for any paint, although oils are the easiest to dry brush. So I'm almost getting nothing coming off now, so there's not very much left on there. And all I'm going to do is just gently with no pressure at all and following the direction I want the staining to go just brush it down so let's see how this turns out now the effect is so as I always say it's a very subtle effect I kind of say that all the time but it's going to be really really subtle and this is just to really stain and give that burnished if that's the right I don't know if that's the right word is that the right word somebody tell me in the comments is that the right word burnished um, that kind of you, you, what your exhaust looks like on the outside of your car, the exhaust when it's been used for a while. It's black on the inside, but kind of has this browny stained look. That's a bit too weak, actually. I've not got much paint on there. So, Starship Filth is hard to describe. It's kind of a browny colour, but it's not just brown. And it works very well with Starship Filth to give sooty heat kind of weathering. I notice how I'm going that way with this because the heat comes out here so I want it to go that way. There's no point doing it here and that way because there's no heat here so, so I'm just going to get this round and I'm not putting a lot of paint. It's not much paint at all. I'm just tinting it. I'm not painting it. I'm just tinting the colours that are already on there and you probably won't see any of this. And It might take a while but this is literally all I'm doing. And it should be a nice fade from the Starship filter, the uh, engine grease colour here, and it should fade to the normal metal. 
almost invisibly, imperceptibly, imperceptibly. Don't know why I said that. Now one trick with dry brushing is if you want to get raised edges, do it perpendicular to the edge that way. So if I wanted to get these little ribs done, I'd do it that way. And, f and don't brush it like this, flick your wrist. So it's just almost touching, but not quite. You're literally doing that. But I'm not trying to get that technique. I'm trying to just paint the whole thing. So there you are. Um, now oil paints, as I've said before, oil paints are a delight to dry brush with, especially these MIG Abteilung 502s, because they're so fine that you don't get any grain to them. Obviously, if the paint underneath is grainy, you'll probably get some grain, but you generally don't get a lot of grain to them, so you can get some really nice blends, and the colours are all smooth. Um, you can dry brush with acrylics and enamels, but I found acrylics are a bit of a pain to do because because acrylics dry so fast. I hope you can see all this. Let me just check. Yeah, because acrylics dry so fast, they dry while you're doing it, and you often get little lumps and bumps and blobs of paint and. It's kind of a pain in the butt, so. Some colours are fine to dry brush with, like to me a flat aluminium. It's kind of a metallic -y colour, so it lasts quite a while before it dries, but other colours can take no time at all to dry, and then you're just left pushing these lumps of paint around. So I try to avoid dry brushing with acrylics. Since I started using oils, I exclusively dry brush with oils, unless it's a colour I don't have, like flat aluminium. I'm not aware you can get metallic oil paints. I doubt it, but I could be wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. Right, so this is coming along nicely. Can take a while. Sometimes it depends on the brush. If I used a bigger brush, this would be a very quick process, but I want it to be delicate and subtle, so. And I'll see if I can show you this close up. Remember, this is just the first half of the dry brushing on these engines. I've got more to come, so if I see if I can show you this, don't know if you'll see it because of the light. See if I can get that in. Okay, so we have this, this engine here. Uh, it's now got this slightly burnished look. I'd, if that isn't the right word, somebody please tell me for the love of God, because I need to make sure I use the right word. I could just be saying like potato or something for all I know, it could be so irrelevant. And that's the original engine there, you can see it's just silver. Um, I forgot to say, I dry brushed these with some flat aluminium once this smoke had dried. So you can see that kind of that brown staining effect. It's kind of an oily stain. That's the first coat. Uh, when that's dried, I'll then go and do um, some Starship filth. So I'll put that to one side for a moment. I'll, I'll go off and finish this. Uh, and when we come back, we'll do some Starship filth on the ship itself. So uh, back in a moment. And we're done. Right, so I've done the engines. I'll give you a quick squeeze. You can see these. So the engines now had the engine grease painted on. They've got that kind of coppery, goldy look, which is cool. Uh, when this is dried, next up will be a, a blast of the dry brush of Starship Filth. So they look much more sooty. I did a little bit on the on the actual back panel as well, just to go around the edges, um, just because I was there and I felt like it. So that so far, my friends, is our engines. Uh, so let's put them to one side somewhere. Okay, now, next we want to start on the ship itself. So for this one, we're going to be doing some Starship filth. Uh, I'll probably use some engine grease on here as well, but for the moment we'll just do the Starship filth. Now it's exactly the same technique, just dry brushing, standard dry brushing. I'm using a softer, fluffier brush for this one though. Um, that little brush I was using was fine, but it was a bit, a bit grippy for the for the paint. It didn't let a lot out. So um, I've painted the guns on this uh, flat aluminium. You'll know this by now. Flat aluminium, washes of black, then a, a coat of smoke, just straight from the pot to give it that bronzy look. Uh, did I do anything else? Yeah, I painted these silver. Or flat aluminium. So, Starship Filth is just a, a grey, dark grey, bluey grey shading colour. Um, as the name 
suggests. It's designed for sort of grimy and grubby parts of starships. You can use it for anything. I use it on figures sometimes. So again, a lot of the paint comes off on the tissue. And I'm just going to very quickly, I hope you can see this, I'm going to very quickly dry brush it. And I'm going to just try and use logic to, to figure out where the, the dirt and dust would go. So let's just get it on this edge for a start. I want a sort of a slightly darker fade to this edge here. So I'm just putting the brush in the hole and just pulling it out. I'm almost no paint on the brush. It's going to be very, very minor effect I'm going to have. It's going to colour the inside edge here and darken it. And I don't even know if you'll see it on camera, but it's just going to give a very slight shade. Depending on how far I pull the brush across the surface. Very slight shade. It's actually collected on a lump of paint here, although there's a bit of a paint chip and it looks a bit darker, so that's quite cool. Doing the same on the back here. I'm brushing it that way just because I want it to fade into the paint on the ship. And I'm also trying to darken this edge so it's not quite as obvious. I'm trying to suggest that there's a whole load of hot things behind that plate, so. Uh, I shall do some on the bottom here. This engine piece is going to go in here, but there's no harm in darkening it. I don't know if you can see this, but hopefully you can. This is a bit harder to get to, so I'm having to sort of stab it in at the moment. Okay. And I'll just fade it out a little bit into the side of the engine here. Just again to suggest there's something very hot in there and it's kind of stained the, the paint a bit. Uh, I'll do a little bit here, but I don't want to do too much because again the heat's coming from the other end of the engine So you're not going to get a lot of this is going to be covered up anyway. I just want a very subtle Bit of staining there And the same on this side You can get quite a lot from just one One brush that's been removed of most of its paint Depends how subtle you want to be if you want really dark patches everywhere you can just keep refilling the brush. I'll just do this bit. Again, wearing gloves means I'm not going to uh, get fingerprints in this paint. You can see how it's gathering around the edge here. I'll show you in a minute when we've done. Also covers up the decals quite nicely, so makes them look like they're painted on. Last thing you want to do is paint them with your model and then stick the decals on because hey, that's not how physics works bit more I think. Um, when you're doing any kind of weathering try and keep in mind the logical progression of the weathering itself. You know the ship the vehicle you're painting is covered in paint. Markings are generally painted onto vehicles not stickers. On real military vehicles they're just generally painted on so whatever weathering you're putting onto the vehicle should really go affect the decals and signage and markings as well. There we go. So it's just darkened it slightly and put a little bit of a shade in here to make it a bit darker. Again, I'm not trying to make it like a, a panda here. I'm not I'm just putting some hints. It also darkens the decals a little bit. So they don't look quite as standout-ish. Go underneath, because you've got the underside here. Uh, I'll put some around this edge, because this is where that back plate's going to go in. So we can assume that's quite grimy. Do a little bit on that edge. Um, where else can I do some? Let's see. You can use it for shading as well, so I could, for example, if I try and, I've got almost nothing on the brush now, if I just gently push it into this corner here, this brush is a bit big really, but um, I can try and put some shading into that angle, that 90 degree angle. Now, I'm not going to put anything around here yet because I need to paint those engines first, so next thing we'll do is these intakes. I'll just show you that bit I've just done so you can see it so as you can see it's very 
understated. It's more like a darker line. The edge here, if you can see it, is much darker because that's nearer the engine. And then you've just got this browny, dark grey shade. Let's see if we can get closer. Browny, dark grey shade going up a little bit and fading into the paint. And that's the idea, you're trying to fade it in. But you can put on as much or as little as you want. I want this to look dirty and filthy, so. Uh, it's a little bit shiny, but when it's dried and varnished, that'll disappear. And you can see the edges here. I've, I've painted the edges so they look dirty. Right, so let's do the, let's do the uh, intakes. Now the intakes, I want to be really grubby, because they're intakes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bang this in. I want quite a lot in there. I want it to be quite dark in there. For two reasons. One, it looks cool when it's an intake and it's dark. And two, there is actually a little seam line in there that I couldn't get out because the, I spotted it after I glued everything together. So this will hopefully cover up that seam line as well. And what you find is if you use a good enough brush, it's not only shaded inside, it's also shaded this bit. Probably a bit too much, so let's just get a cotton bud and just rub that out a bit. And that's to say, the beauty with oils, you can rub them out almost. I don't want too much on here. So I can fade that back a bit. And if you wanted to get rid of it, you could just put some thinner on the brush, on the cotton bud, and take it off altogether. So that now in there is nice and dark. Just clean it up again. I'll leave a little bit because it catches around the edges and just gives it a bit of realism. And that is dry brushing with Starship Filth. Uh, I'll now go off and do the two intakes and any of the little bits I can find that I wear a fancy pudding some. Um, and then what should we do when we come back what I've done there is I'll leave these to dry for 24 hours when we come back we'll sort out these bits and that panel on the back with a slightly different technique not dry brushing but using something a bit thicker so um, let me go and do that I'll show you that I'll show you the finished result when we when I've done the rest of the dry brushing uh, so you know what I'm going to say. Back in a moment. Right, so that's all the Starship Filth dry brushing done. Uh, I'll give you a close-up shot in a second. Uh, what have I done? I've done around the back as you saw. Uh, I've added some dry brush. I decided to put some dry brush around the edge of the avionics bay. Uh, not focusing on the inside of it yet, that's later, but just on the outside just to get a bit of a fade from the edge of it to the paint outside. Uh, I've done the gun tips, wing tips even. Um, I like to think that as the guns are firing they're putting out whatever the Battlestar Galactica equivalent of gunshot residue is. So you get some smoke and dust. I've put a little bit under there as well because that's where the gun is. Uh, I've done the intakes, dry brushed around the inside lip of the intakes to darken it and also over the the blades themselves I'll probably go over with a cotton bud and just take some of the paint off the blades just so you can see them uh, I also did some dry brushing for the RCA oh I did in the nose as well uh, just darkened in there also did the dry brushing for the RCS thrusters uh, what I used for that um, similar to last time that's the wrong brush just use a small chisel edge brush, uh, got it ready with the paint, dry brush technique with almost no paint and had it sideways and end on like that and I just flicked like that. I flicked it up so that it got thinner as it went along and you get this nice little streak. Uh, and I've done that for all the little thruster areas on the back there, on the top of the engine cowlings and on the nose. Came out quite nicely. Uh, and underside on the guns as well. So that's now the Starship Filth dry brushing done. Um, 
I need to leave that to dry for 24 hours. Oh, I'll give you a close-up look. What am I talking about? I'm an idiot. Let me give you a close-up look. Now, I've just had to refilm this bit because I filmed this bit a minute ago and realised half of it was out of focus. So, duh. So you can see the uh, the subtle dry brushing around here. I actually realised I'm watching it back. It's not that subtle. So I may have gone a bit too far, but it's, it's fun. I enjoy it. I get carried away and uh, all my models are filthy, filthy. So uh, around the avionics bay, just, I say, just accenting the edge, really. On the guns. Uh, and that's the streaking for the, for the RCS thrusters. And there's quite a few of those. So you see the kind of effect you try to get with dry brushing. That's what you're really looking for is just... You could be doing anything, you know, you could be doing any colour. But you're just trying to blend the colours somewhat. Uh, now they're a bit shiny at the moment because the paint's still wet. Uh, but that will dry out. And when it dries out, it'll the shine will go a little bit. And they will matte varnish it anyway. So it'll drop down and this similar to pastels when you spray the, when you if you spray your matte varnish onto oil paints uh, they tend to blend in a bit more I don't know why um, so so that's going to do for now I need to leave this to dry for 24 hours um, so I'll come back when that's done when we come back uh, I will I will do something what will I do I will do my brain has actually now officially stopped we'll do the next bit um, I think once this is dried I can varnish it, get these painted up, um, get the dry brushing on there. So the next bit would then be, oh we need to do these don't we? So the next bit when this is dried is to do these parts and this back plate. Uh, so let's go and let this dry, go and get yourself a cup of coffee and when we come back we'll do those. Back in a minute, oh uh, by the way I forgot to apologise, forgot to, I meant to apologise, I've just been watching back some of the earlier ones. First of all, my head is here for the whole goddamn thing, so uh, apologies again. Uh, as I said in the last video, I have moved the camera around a bit, and I'm still trying to figure out where exactly my workable area that you can see is, and where my entire face is, so sorry about that. And also, I noticed when I was dry brushing, the camera's wobbling, because the camera's on a tripod on the desk, and the desk wobbles, so I might try and figure out a solution to that. Probably just not be so heavy with my hands. Um, so anyway, yes. Come back in a second and we will do the avionics bay and the back plate. Back in a moment. Okie dokie. Okay, the dry brushing's now had time to dry. Uh, well, I've left it 24 hours and then I've matte varnished it. Uh, the trick with all paints is you never quite know exactly how long they're going to take to dry. It depends how thick the paint is. Uh, the more thickly it's applied, the longer it can take. Uh, so to be safe that I'm not going to disturb the paint I put on there now with dry brushing, uh, I've matte varnished it so it's protected. I'd normally recommend if you've done dry brushing, if you are going to varnish it, to leave it at least 24 hours, maybe 48, just to make sure it's dry enough that the paint doesn't then react with the the uh, the varnish. I'm using an acrylic varnish, and of course these are oil paints, so you want to make sure the oil paint's cured and dry as much as possible. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to quickly do this next bit, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Um, I'm going to quickly add some darkening to the side pieces here, and to the back panel here. And we'll do, I will, I'll also do it, well, I will, I will do some dry, I'll get my words out. Hello? Uh, right, we'll try again. I'll do this back panel here. And then off camera I'll do the dry brushing on the, uh, on the goose feathers. You've seen me do it on the body, so I don't need to show you that again. Um, so what we're going to do, a bit of a different technique this time. First of all, I'll get some thinner, because I forgot that bit. One moment. And as always... I've completely forgotten my kitchen roll. Don't really need it, but I'm going to use it anyway. Okay, what we're going to do with these, with the back plates and with these side pieces here, I want them to look darker, but I want little metallic highlights showing through. Uh, I did do some dry brushing around the edge, as you saw, but I wasn't interested in dry brushing these interior parts. <clears throat> so, quite simple. I've got some more... Abtai Lung 502 Starship Filth. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to need some cotton buds, a soft brush, and an old t-shirt, which, as you can see, has been used for lots of paint dobbing and drying. So what I shall do is, I'm going to put a tiny bit of thinner into the paint, just to soften it a little bit. 
mix it slightly. And all I'm going to do is, without really thinking about it, I'm just going to paint this straight in. Now I know it's going outside the edges, but that's not a problem because we'll clean it up. So I'm just going to paint it in carelessly. I'm not paying too much attention. Just getting into all the little crooks and nannies. Okay, so that now looks completely badly painted and messy, it's all around the edges. What I shall do now is take my t-shirt, move my paint out of the way, take my t-shirt and just gently, I hope you can see this, I don't know if you can see this from that angle, but just gently get the t-shirt in there and scrub. What this should do is get rid of chunks of the paint. And expose the highlight, the sort of the raised areas. Now it looks shiny right now, but that will go away once it's varnished. You don't have to think about this; just do it. And what you'll find is that the paint will remain in the recessed areas and the bits the t-shirt can't get to. These guns aren't making it easy, uh, but it will be scrubbed away. On the exposed areas. I'll get my little toothpick, um, cotton bud. Now I'm going to dip this in some thinner because what I want to do now is get rid of any paint that I got around the outside because I don't want the paint on there. I've already done the, the weathering on the outside, but this is just to remove any paint that's now just come on since I just scrubbed it like there. Just cleans up the edges. Hopefully, what you should see, apart from my head, which is probably completely filling the shot, what you should see now is that that is now much darker, but it has a grubby, dirty, metallic colour to it. I'll just bring it up close so you can see it. And I'll get the focus. Okay, so you should be able to see now it's looking much darker. But it's got some natural relief. It's got dark areas, high areas, and it looks kind of metallic and oily. Now you could use any colour for this. You could use black if you wanted to. Depends what colour you want it to be. And um, so you could use black. You could use copper colours if it was say coppery. Uh, other metallic colours. You could use engine grease if you want it to look oily. Uh, you could theoretically do the back engines that way, <laughs> instead of doing it the way I did them with the the washes and the black and the smokes. It's another way to make dirty metallic looking parts. And because I've cleaned around the outside, it's got this nice crisp edge, although the paint's gathered on the inside lip, but not on the outside. Which is why when I originally painted this, I was saying I wasn't too worried about getting wobbly edges on the inside because we'd be doing this. And that is all you need to do uh, on that. <coughs> That's all I'm going to do, apart from check the focus, as always. Uh, That's what I'm going to do. So when that dries, it will be less shiny. Uh, any of the exposed metallic areas beneath may still be a bit shiny, but I'm going to matte varnish it anyway. Uh, and then I shall repeat the process on the other side and on the back plates here, just to make them dark because they're supposed to be dark. This bit here is supposed to be white, but these are supposed to be darker. So I'll go away and do that. Once that's dried, I'll matte varnish it. Then I'll paint in these engines, put a little bit of the uh, dry brushing of the Starship fill just around the engine bay here so it's got a little bit of shading um, and then get it all stuck together so that's almost it now uh, what's left to come I need to do a quick dry brush of white which I'll show in the next episode just to get bring some of the white back uh, and then stick it on the display stand I've not decided what I'm doing with the display stand yet I can order a pre-made one that's all uh, made of beach and varnished and it comes with a little name plaque um, or I may just use that stand and paint it I don't know yet or I may just get some pieces of wood and make a stand I think I'll probably go with the pre-made one because um, I'm keen to get this done now we've only really got one episode left um, so I shall leave it there I think so that'll do for now uh, as always thank you very much to my friends at eModels uh, they actually supplied this model. 
Uh, go along to their website, emodels.co.uk, for all your modelling needs, products, advice, uh, anything you need, tools, kit. Uh, brilliant website. Uh, and as I always say, if they haven't got it, you don't need it. Also go along to their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash emodelsltd. Brilliant community. Post your pictures up. Um, they'll keep you updated as new products that have come in uh, and when they expect to get stock in. Um, and they're a really nice bunch of guys, so hang out on their Facebook page, like it and put it into your newsfeed. But that'll do for this time. Uh, we shall see you next time when we'll crack on with what I said a moment ago. Um, but as always, until then, adios amoebas. Bye.